Hi guys, this is a quick video to review and teach you guys about uh, the two empires of India, the Mauryan and the Gupta empires. Notice you have two maps up on your screen. The Mauryan empire, which happens first, is going to be much larger than the Gupta empire. The Gupta empire is just centered in northern India, whereas the Mauryan empire expands a little bit more, uh, not fully to all of modern day India today, but notice it also does expand across the Indus River Valley uh, into modern day Pakistan. So the founder of the Mauryan Empire is a guy named Chandragupta Maurya. Uh, that is his full name. Uh, and he takes the throne in 321 BCE after he kills an unpopular king. Uh, and he kind of reasserts control. So what was the empire like? It's the largest and in the first empire in, in India. And it's known for a centralized government with a bureaucracy. So just like a modern day bureaucracy, they have agencies and um, people whose job is to make sure that the government runs smoothly. They mainly use it for tax collection. They also created an efficient postal system and had a well-trained, fierce army that utilized war elephants. They also used a specialized spy network and a series of assassinations to exercise control and authority over their large empire. In 269 BCE, Chandragupta Maurya's grandson, Ashoka, takes power and becomes the most important ruler under the Mauryan Empire. So if you have a test question that asks who is the most important figure of the Mauryan Empire, that is definitely Ashoka. Why? That's because he has a lot of, a, uh, he does a lot of things to not only expand India uh, to its furthest extent, but also because he's going to uh, help spread Buddhism. So he begins as a Hindu prince, and when he becomes king, he acts more like a dictator. Then, after a battle, he sees the error of his ways and becomes a kind leader, and then eventually, towards the end of his life, he, com he converts to Buddhism. Uh, there is a video here about Ashoka's war elephants. You need to pause the video, and in the description, there's a link there you want to uh, watch that video. So about uh, Ashoka's conversion. So he fights a battle called the Battle of Kalinga where he defeats his enemies. However, after the battle he's walking across the field and he sees these masses of bodies just laying around. He has this moment of clarity or really an epiphany where he's like, oh my god, what have I done? And he changes his life and his empire and, and, and starts to vow and take on the teachings of Buddha, which we've, stu we've studied Buddhism. So he sends missionaries to Southeast Asia. He sends them to China as an attempt to spread Buddhist teachings. And he built a number of stupas, which are the places of worship for uh, Buddhists. And you can see one down here in, um, in the lower right-hand corner. His legacy, there's four legacies that you do need to know. He spreads Buddhism. Okay, so Ashoka helps to spread Buddhism mainly to the east, specifically China, where, where it is uh, the most popular religion in China today. Uh, also to the west, along the trade routes. He is also famous for building these stone-rocked edicts, or these pillars and stupas uh, that um, help put the laws and also the Buddhist teaching into writing where, you know, average everyday Joes would have seen these. Stupas are places of religious meditation and learning for, for Buddhists as well. He is also ex uh, known for extensive public services, mainly building hospitals, the very first veterinary clinics, and roads. And religious toleration. So he is going to allow multiple different religious practices in his uh, empire. He doesn't really care what you are as long as you live in peace and harmony. So here we have some famous images of some stupas and these pillars here. Notice uh, like this one has uh, a many spoked wheel which is representative of Buddhism. So Buddhism will spread uh, mainly to Ashoka via missionaries to Southeast Asia over here. This is Indonesia. China, and um, west towards the Mediterranean Basin. 
Buddhism attracts a large number of followers because it's adaptable to local customs and it's peaceful and it emphasizes individual practice. Ashoka's death. So in, after his death, internal conflicts break out. And for the next 500 years, a number of immigrants are going to come into India, particularly from Greece, Persia, and Central Asia, which disrupt traditional Indian society. By 320 CE, so this is about 600 years after the Mauryan Empire was established, a new empire, the Gupta Empire, is going to develop. And we call the Gupta Empire the Golden Age. That's because it's kind of the high point of uh, Indian ancient civilization. So the founder of India, uh, the Gupta Empire was Chandra Gupta I. There's no relation to the Mauryan kings, but the name is similar, Chandra Gupta. He unified India after years of civil war and oversaw a great flowering of Indian civilization, which is why we call it a golden age. He once again created a strong centralized government and allowed trade and farming to flourish. So we're also going to see a number of accomplishments or achievements going to develop, which is why we call it a golden age. We see great advancements, especially in science, art, and literature. They lead the world in math during this time period. They're the ones who first came up with this idea of zero and discovered pi, 3.1459, blah, 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 blah. They discovered uh, that the Earth was not flat in science and astronomy way before Europeans did, uh, who thought, like the Romans thought, that uh, the Earth was flat. Uh, the, the Guptan, uh, in the Guptan Empire, they figured out that it was round. So big achievements there. Some other achievements is they uh, advanced in medicine, they developed some surgery, they developed pi and their decimal system, and they're also going to make advancements in literature, poetry, and drama. So you want to put those additional achievements in the space. The Gupta will... Um, the Gupta Empire is at its height when the Roman Empire is falling, around 400 CE. We are going to start to see the decline of the Gupta Empire uh, due to civil unrest and poor rulers, which we, tends to lead to social instability. Um, and so we have a period of civil war afterwards. This idea of poor leaders, social instability, uh, civil unrest is going to lead to the fall of empires is a reoccurring theme in our studies. All right, that's it. Hope you guys learned a little bit about the Mauryan and Gupta Empire, and have a good day.